Hi, I am Amit Lunkar. In this video, we discuss in detail about Arnett index. It is also known as Arnett count. In this video, we discuss in detail basic principle, then its procedure as well as clinical significance of this Arnett index or Arnett count. Let's begin with the introductory part of this. The Arnett count is the determination of the percentage distribution of different types of neutrophils on the basis of their nuclear lobes. But it is not commonly used in modern medicine. Joseph Arnett classified neutrophils into following five types. Here we classify this as stage 1 that is N1 which in which the nucleus is unilobe and the nucleus is having C shape or U shape. Normal range is around 2 to 5 percent. Whereas stage 2 that is N2 in which nucleus is bilobed, two lobes are separated by thin strands. Here it is again separated by thin strands and normal range is around 20 to 30 percent. The next type is we say it as a stage 3 that is N3 in which nucleus is trilobe and these three lobes are separated by thin strands and which are having a around normal range 40 to 50 percent. The next type is we say as a stage 4 that is N4 in which nucleus is tetralobe and these four lobes are separated by thin strands and normal range is around 10 to 15 percent. And last one is we say as a stage 5 that is N5 in which nucleus is pentalobe and five lobes are separated by thin strand and which are having a 2 to 5 percent in normal range. Now next is about the basic principle of this Arnett count. The staining of neutrophiles is based on the degree of maturity. The younger neutrophiles contain fewer nuclear lobes than the older ones. The neutrophiles enter the bloodstream mostly as bilobed cells but the number of lobes increases to 5 or more by the end of their short lifespan of 8 to 10 hours. Neutrophiles are grouped into different types as just now we have seen N1, N2, N3, N4 and N5 which is on the basis of nuclear lobes by examining a stain smear under oil immersion objective. In case of difficulty in determining nuclear lobes, two other parameters can be also considered to stage the neutrophiles and these are the number of granules. The younger cells contain more granules whereas the second one is the size of the cell. The cell size decreases as the cell advances on age. So this parameter you may also use for differentiating the older and younger neutrophiles. Now moving to the next one procedure for this determination of Arnett count. First of all you have to prepare a thin blood smear which we prepared uh, similarly in case of determination of differential white blood cell count that is DLC and then you have to stain with Leishman stain or rich stain. After that examine the smear under low power objective to assess the distribution of cells. Once you do this then count neutrophiles under oil immersion objective as N1, N2, N3, N4 and N5 for neutrophiles having 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 nuclear lobes respectively. Count the cells in the zigzag pattern. Now you have to count at least 100 neutrophiles and enter your observations in a tabular format. Note the percentage distribution of various stages of neutrophiles and plot a graph. Suppose this is your normal pattern or 
normal count like in case of for n1 uh, which is unilobe which are found 0.5% n2 which is bilobe found 30% n3 which is trilobe found 45% n4 that is nucleus which are having tetralobe having 18% and lastly N5 stage 5 in which nucleus is pentalobe and which is found 2%. So depending upon that you have to plot a graph. Uh, so this is the plot which are uh, you obtain in normal pattern. Means this is a normally you will see or you observe the graph. But there are few significance if there are any shifting of this normal graph. The earnet count is used to determine the number of younger or older neutrophiles in the circulation. As it reveals the production of neutrophiles, it indirectly reflects the activity of the bone marrow. When there are more younger cells in circulation, the change is called shift to left and when there are more older cells in the circulation, the change is called shift to right. We observe in next slide. So here, uh, if there are shift gra uh, shifting of graph to the left side, so the total cell counted in N1, N2 and N3 stage are more than 80%. It indicates that bone marrow is hyperactive because left shift occurs due to increased production of cells and this is also called regenerative shift. The conditions related to this are acute pyrogenic infections, tuberculosis, hemorrhage and irradiation. So in this condition there are chances of the shifting of the graph to the left hand side. Whereas if the shift is to the right side which occurs when the total cell counted in N4 and N5 are more than 20% and it indicates that bone marrow is hypoactive because right shift occurs due to the hypofunction of bone marrow and this is also called degenerative shift. The conditions related to this are megaloblastic anemia, aplastic anemia, septicemia and uremia. So in this condition there are chances of the shifting of graph to the right hand side. So this is the clinical significance of earnet count. Hope all of you getting this. Thank you and happy learning.